So to continue with the theme of the segmental movement of the spine and the three axes of movement that that comes out of, uh, we've done the forwards back movement of the spine, what we can call the dorsal spinal wave or undulation, and we've done the side to side one. Um, so the idea is that, or the way to understand it, is to know that we have all of these spinal segments, seven cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic vertebrae, five lumbar vertebrae, and then the sacrum and coccyx. And each of these segments is able to move, or we hope should be able to move independently. Um, and so the basic movements that come out of that are each, each vertebra has sticking off it. If this, is a, if this is a vertebra, each vertebra has two transverse processes sticking out to the sides. And it also then has one sticking out the middle spinous process, which sticks out the back. And so you can see these, these ones sticking out. These are the, these. Those are the spinous processes. And then to either side sticking out, so here's the spinous process, sticking out that way and sticking out this way are the two transverse processes. It'd be good if I had a model, but I don't. So, and what that means is that you have one vertebra with spinous process, transverse process, transverse process, sitting on top of another, sitting on top of another, sitting on top of another. And each of these has muscles connecting diagonally and also straight up and down to the one above, which means that each vertebra is able to do three movements. It's able to flex and extend, flex and extend, which makes the spine go this way. And because it's segmental, that means you get waves and whole, whole bends, all of them moving together and then all of them moving one by one in a wave. The other one which we've done is the lateral undulation, the side to side, which is where these two transverse processes the muscles between them contract and they don't go closer together. So you get this one side contracting, the other side opening, which then means in whole body movements you get bending side to side. And then in segmental movements you get this du -du 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 undulations going up the spine. And then the other movement possible with this structure is rotation, where one vertebra goes that way and the other one below goes the other way, sorry. Um, and so then when you get them all going the same way, you get the whole spine turning together. But then because we're segmental, sometimes you want one part of the body going one way and the other part of the body has to go the other way. Or you're going this way, but then your upper body has to... So we get these different combinations of rotation and flexion, extension and side bending happening at each, at each vertebral level. So. We've done some exercises to develop this segmental movement in the front back sagittal plane and in the side to side frontal plane. And uh, I just wanted to mention again that this structure of the vertebrae with the spinous and transverse processes and the segmental structure and movement is common to all vertebrates. So snakes, fish, lizards, cats, dogs, horses, frogs, all of these things. This, everything with the spine has this basic structure. And so the sizes of the vertebrae are different and the amounts that they're able to flex and extend or bend to the side or rotate are different in different creatures. But the pattern and the combinations of movements is exactly the same. So in terms of us with our, what we've been talking about, um, the empathy circuitry, the mirror neuron system, uh, with us getting developing this segmental awareness of the whole spine, and and through that, then our inherent ability to, when we look carefully at the movements of other people or other creatures, then we literally feel their spinal movements in our own spines. We feel something, our nervous system gives us a representation, a, a, a kinesthetic representation in our bodies of what it feels like to, to be them or to move our spines in that way, that person or that creature. So 
it's good to keep in mind with this that what we're doing is training of the nervous system primarily, training of our ability to feel and our cortical maps of these areas, which then crosses over into other activities. It's much, uh, much more important to understand that we're developing our awareness rather than thinking our oh, mindless, mindless movement is, uh, is what it's all about. So back to this week when we're doing the rotation, I'll just uh, start with a very simple, simple exercise. Okay, so I'm just gonna start lying on my back and first of all, I'll just start leading with the head. So I'll just start looking one way, looking the other way. And you see from the eyes, the eyes are pulling the skull. The skull is pulling the first cervical vertebra, which is pulling the next. When I go the other way, the eyes lead, skull follows. Then that'll start pulling one vertebra, another vertebra, like this. And gradually, the shoulder will start coming off the ground. And I can start lifting the head and looking in different directions. So as I turn, I look, the head follows, the spine follows, and it gradually, it gradually starts going further and further down the spine. And then I can bring the arm in. So now the fingertip follows the eyes and the fingertip and the eyes go together and then that leads. So now the head's leading the top of the neck, but now the hand's leading the elbow, leading the shoulder, leading the shoulder blade, leading the rib cage leading the spine, so the whole lot will follow. And you see how the whole spine follows just naturally, no matter where I'm pointing. So if I start going this way, the spine follows. If I start going this way, the spine follows. And so to get that segmental thing, what I can do is I can find any point. So if I get to this point, say, and this is where the shoulder blade has started and it's engaged the rib cage, and then that's going reaching around to the spine. So I can just I can just work on this part. This reaching, reaching, reaching. And so then this continues into a full rolling over. And then once I start to get this movement, I can start leading in different ways. So I can lead with my hand. I'll start leading with my right hand. I reach backwards, reach backwards, and over there. I can start reaching this way, reaching this way, and turn back. I can keep reaching with the right hand around and over, or back, So this was all with the right hand, or I can lead with the foot. So if I lead with my left foot, reaching with the left foot, that pulls the knee, pulls the hip, pulls the pelvis, sacrum, pulls the spine. So reaching with the left foot, rotating the foot, rotating it to rotate the hip. So I rotate the foot, externally rotate, it rotates the hip, and that rotates the sacrum. So like this, we then have this movement. I can also lead from the center itself. So it's, you know, if we want to talk about core exercise, um, then I'm in like my, whatever my Pilates type position or my baby position, all of these are movements that infants make, um, which I'll no doubt rant about another time. But then I start from here and start the twist from there. So again, obviously another baby position here. And start from the upper parts.
for stopping and resting and stuff, but it's nice to work quite hard. And also including the rolling and the eyes just following, following the hands up to sitting and down. So I'll keep going this way so you can see the long eyes following hands and up to sitting and then this naturally starts to come up into standing um, and this rotation then comes out in in all of these different kinds of kinds of movements with the eyes and spine following the the hands or the intention basically and then movements naturally coming through the hips and into the ground. I'll get more into that uh, starting next week with some whole body movements in three dimensions that are more obviously human movements. Um, and that'll tie it back to what we've done uh, previously as to how these spinal waves are actually present in all of our normal humans um, once we know they're there.